Woodward Sports content, head over to woodwardsports.com right now for up-to-date sports articles and great entertainment news. We have the best writers, bloggers, and coverage all at your fingertips. Head to woodwardsports.com right now to experience all Woodward Sports has to offer. All right, Monday morning, live, woodwardsports.com. Adam B. doing as always. No Jeff I. Frey today. Called in sick like a little girl. You know, what are you going to do? Right? How, how do you, how do, whatever, you know. Just casually calls in. Hey, guys, you know, uh, I woke up not feeling the best. I don't feel like doing the show today. Jeff can do whatever he wants around here. No problem. <laughs> but we'll have fun today. It's going to be a cool show. Uh, I hope. You all had a great weekend. Uh, It was a shitty weekend in sports uh, because I didn't watch any. I didn't watch any. So you guys want to know how my weekend went? Well, I didn't watch any college basketball. Uh, I watched one Sweet 16 game during the week, and I watched zero of the Elite A action. And I will watch zero of the Final Four, and I won't be watching the National Championship game. And I, I know what you guys are thinking. Adam, FAU... Miami, San Diego State, UConn. It's March Madness, right? I, I get that's the only good thing you can tell me. But uh, I think it's shit. <laughs> I think it's shit. Um, this is why I don't watch college basketball during the season, huh? Literally, it's all irrelevant because this fucking bracket is such a shit show. This is what we get. But you know, outside of that, you had the. DJ Chark news. Chark signs with the Carolina Panthers on a one year. I think it was a $5 million contract. Uh, Very interesting. Uh, We got a lot to get to today. We got a lot to get to. I'm still fasting. I'm still pissed off. Sleep schedule totally out the door, by the way, boys. Totally gone. Can't do anything. I try to sleep early, wake up at 2, 3 in the morning, eat, but then I can't fall back asleep. And then I probably get an hour power nap and I wake up super angry. You're prepping for your baby coming. Yeah, that too. I'm not going to be a happy dad. <laughs> it's going to be brutal. This is going to be brutal. But here's what here's what we got today lined up. All right, We're going to open up with some Chark news. Uh, solutions at the wide receiver position. We'll get to the Jets and Packers not making any progress, by the way, on this whole Aaron Rodgers thing, which I think is hilarious. This is exactly what the Lions used to be in different areas but still it's kind of funny to see another team especially in your division completely shitting the bed we'll get to fan mock drafts at 8 30 8 45 uh we'll take a detour with callers at nine o'clock i will release my mock draft 5.0 on a monday morning 9 15 we'll take more callers reactions to the mock draft it's gonna be a fun show today's about you guys actually too i do a ton of calls Phone lines are going to be open, 313-552-6322. Phone lines are going to be open. You guys get to hear me talk about a lot of shit that makes me upset. Speaking of shit, by the way, that makes me upset. Thank you very much. Speaking of things that makes me very, very upset. You know, guys, I call me old-fashioned. Call me, uh, call me an old man. I don't know what you guys want to call me this morning, but... When did we get such... Uh, I got to choose my words carefully now. <laughs> when did we become so soft just in life? And I'm not talking about, you know, political. I'm not talking about anything. I'm talking specifically about how we've gotten so goddamn soft that we can't even take any criticism. You know? I just... I don't know where we're going. And I don't like it. I don't like the fact that I'm going to have to raise a kid... In this shit world, where all of you are a bunch of pussies, and you got nothing better to do than be offended. You know, I'm offended that you're offended this morning. (laughs) That's exactly how I feel, honestly. Very frustrating. So sad. So sad. We used to actually be upset about real things. Now, oh, he never replied to my text message quick enough. Eh, Shut the fuck up. Don't even know what a man is anymore, let alone a woman. What are you doing? Well, what are we doing today? It'll be a great show. I'm angry. I'm so angry over the week. You guys have no idea. Barely slept. Ate, but not healthy. When I mean not healthy, I mean I don't think it's healthy to be eating at 2 in the morning. 
You know, so you're having a light breakfast trying to get through the next day. Fucking god damn it, man. What are you going to do? All right. DJ Char. Here's what we got, Lions fans. Uh, we'll open up the phone lines, like I mentioned, 313-552-6322. DJ Chark signing with the Carolina Panthers. And you know what? To be honest with you, uh, I would love to go on this tirade that I think it's a big deal or that I think there is uh, possible solutions that the Lions should consider. To be honest with you, I don't care this morning. I actually don't. I don't give a crap. And me not giving a shit is actually the biggest compliment I can give. To Brad Holmes in this front office. I actually don't care about the DJ Chark news. I didn't tweet about it. I didn't post about it. Nothing. Eh, don't care. Don't care at all. Is he going to fix it in the draft? Free agency? I don't care. <laughs> I actually don't. Because there are three things I'm not going to do with Brad Holmes. One, try and predict his next move. I think that's impossible. Anybody sitting there saying they know what he's going to do next. Go fuck yourself. All right, we'll start there. Number one. Number two, what I refuse to do with Brad Holmes in this front office is not give them the benefit of the doubt. If Chark is going to walk, okay, fine. Let's see who the replacement is. You look at the free agency pool, it's not the best. You look at the NFL draft, well, you know what? I like a player. Is he going to be available at your picks in the second round? Who knows? Could be the best wide receiver coming out. Who knows? Should be fun. We'll get to that at 9 o'clock, of course. And then the third thing. The third thing I'm going to do. Or excuse me. The third thing that I will not do with Brad Holmes in this front office. Is question why a player is signed or resigned. Uh, have we not learned? Uh, look, this isn't Martin Mayhew. It's not Bob Quinn. It's not Matt Mellon. This is a guy that knows what the hell he's doing. Now, is Brad Holmes immune from making mistakes absolutely not absolutely not levi on not the best pick josh pascal we'll see how he does in his second year didn't play much in his first year frustrating sure you want to get those second round picks uh correct of course you do uh the trinity benson trade not that i give a shit but you know what if you want to point out something that didn't work fine no problem he's not gonna he's not gonna bat a thousand but he's 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 elite right now He's making elite moves. And when DJ Chark signs with the Carolina Panthers, I don't care. Wish him the best. Good luck. Could the Lions have signed him to the same, if not more lucrative deal? Maybe. Maybe. But if I'm DJ Chark, I know I'm probably the third option on the offense next year. <laughs> and as much as I do like Detroit, and maybe as much as I would like to win, I would also like to get paid. And I know that the... Panthers are going to be drafting a rookie quarterback number one overall, and he's going to have to throw the ball for about 35, 36, 3,700 yards this year, realistically. If I can get eight, 900 of those, mm, I'm going to get a nice contract. Move makes sense for DJ Chark. Happy for him. Great dude. Good man. Good father. Best of luck, buddy. No problem. Anybody complaining this morning, you know where to go. Don't look at me. Don't talk to me. I'm not interested. Oh, man. It's it's fun, man. This, to me, is what it's supposed to be about. You have a, a, a GM. Uh, you know, maybe five years ago, a player like this walks away. You're like, what are we going to do? What's going on? This is unacceptable. We're, how, how is this happening? And I, I, I really don't care, and I would love to know what you guys think. What's the solution? Huh? Jalen Hyatt, Quentin Johnston in the first round. I've seen that around. That's a bunch of shit, but you know, whatever. People have their opinions. You got to respect their opinions. They don't have to agree, but you have to respect them, right? All right that's the world we, we should live in, where you and I can disagree. You and I can have different opinions on something, and, you know, somehow, some way, we can still casually talk to each other with some form of respect. And not get offended and cry on social media or cry to your mom and dad or cry to your boss. We should be able to disagree. Real Kareem Awee says, Adam, you don't respect anybody. Well, <laughs> tough shit. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a fun show, man. It's going to be a fun show. I can't wait. 
I can't wait. Solutions for the Lions at wide receiver. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Phone lines are open, 313-552-6322. Before I even take any calls, before I even ask you what you think, before I even share what I think they should do, what I think is more important is uh, I'm not worried. I'm really not. People ask me all the time, Adam, what are you going to do uh, this year for the draft? Draft the cocaine. Uh, like, to me, that last year, that was necessary. This year, no. Chilling. Chilling. GM knows what he's doing. I don't got to put any stress. I don't have to put any pressure. He knows what he's doing. Now, uh, can I disagree with some of the picks? And will I? Sure. That's okay. No problem. Still trust him. Not going to question. Unless it's something totally out of left field, maybe. But... To me, there's nothing this GM can or can't do that's going to bother me or or make me look a, look another way where I'm I'm starting to be concerned. It's just not going to happen. Now, do you want to replace Chark? Of course you do. Do you want to add a, a wide receiver, uh, a veteran wide receiver? You would think so. You don't want to have a rookie, a second year, and a third year pro out there at one, two, and three for your wide receiver position. It's not ideal. Could they roll out with Josh Reynolds? Maybe. Could they roll out with Khalif Raymond? Maybe. But I don't care. I actually don't care. And I think that's one of my favorite opinions I've had in a long time, to be honest with you. I actually just don't care. Because for once in my life, I don't have to worry about the GM fucking it all up. Lions built a hell of a defense back in the day. Matthew Stafford, Calvin Johnson on the offensive side of the ball. Then you had a top five defense statistically of all time. Unbelievable. Fucked it all up within a year. <laughs> First round picks. Eric Ebron trading up for Javid Best. Nick Fairley not re-signing in Dominican Sue. List goes on and on. I don't got to worry about that with this GM. I just don't. For those of you asking about Jeff, he is a little bit under the weather. His voice is gone-ish. His voice is, you know, he'll be back. He'll be back tomorrow. I have full faith in Jeff. No chance he misses two shows in a row. But we know what he was doing all weekend. I was sucking a lot of, uh, you know, lollipops. <laughs> and he's not here to defend himself. So tough shit, Jeff. <laughs> oh, man. All right. JB in the booth with us this morning. We got Broder, Alex, myself. It's going to be a fun show. When we get back, we'll go to your calls. 313-552-6322. What should the lines do at wide receiver? Uh, Sutton was a name that popped off this weekend but sean payton was quick uh to temper those uh, rumors probably not gonna happen him or judy not going anywhere so what do you do alliance fans first round receiver second round who knows who knows but whatever it is uh we don't care what we care about is that you get your tan on with chili peppers tanning look there's no better option there's no better place uh jeff typically the spokesperson for chili peppers tanning but damn it i'm doing it today Hottest bulbs, hottest deals, and the darkest tans at Chili Peppers Tanning. Join the Pepper Club for $5 a month. What are you waiting for? The hottest bulbs, the hottest deals, Chili Peppers Tanning. When it comes to making your haircut truly an experience, there's no better place than Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Come to any one of our 26 Metro Detroit locations for an award-winning haircut experience and qualify for a chance to win a down payment for your dream home up to $200,000. Our precision haircut and talented stylists will have you looking good, feeling good, and give you a chance to change your life forever. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men, open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. It's wicked awesome. Since the dawn of moving people, Chevrolet has led the way. The world of transportation is changing. At Feldman Chevrolet, we are leading the charge forward. With every electric vehicle, every mile traveled, one Feldman at a time. The company that puts more Chevys on Michigan roads is now the number one name for Chevy electric vehicles. Woodward Avenue, the first paved road in America. Woodward Sports, the first sports network born in Detroit and made for Detroit. 
let me tell you guys about big boy because the seafood fest is back at big boy catch it while you can some favorites during lent like the shrimp alfredo the shrimp stir fry and of course the new fish sandwich don't forget about the all you can eat fish fry buffet on friday nights and also stop at your local big boy today to give them a try woodwardsports.com 8 15 on a beautiful monday morning if you're not watching live, make sure you check out the podcast after. You can always listen and download it. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find The Morning Show. Download it. Leave it a five-star review for Jeff not showing up to work today. You know, that's always a good option. <laughs> Let me ask you guys this before we get into the solutions for replacing DJ Chark. You guys ever have a coworker and he's never let you down? Or she? And then at 7, 10 in the morning, completely lets you down on a day where you weren't prepared for them to let you down. Ever happened to you guys? <laughs> oh, Jeff, probably drank too much. Took like 14 girls home probably over the weekend. God knows what Jeff was doing this weekend. All I know is single Jeff is not healthy for the, the religious population here in Michigan. Yeah, that's right, JB. That's exactly what's going on. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Jeff right now is not even sick. He's just out consulting with a lawyer, getting ready to start an OnlyFans. 100%. 100%. Knowing Jeff, my goodness. You see some of these creators out there today? Jeff would be involved in every video. The Italian Stallion. There, Jeff, I just gave you your nickname. Go to work, buddy. You and your Italian sausage. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Solutions at wide receiver. Uh, we open the phone lines 313 552 6322. What do you guys think the line should do at wide receiver? You guys know how I feel. I actually just don't care this morning. Uh, I didn't care about the Chark news. I don't care about who they're rumored with. It all means nothing to me, whether it's Odell, whether it's a rookie wide. I don't care. Do I have my preference? Sure, I do. I do have a preference, and I'll, I'll get to that a little later. But Phone lines are open. JB, let's take our first call of the day. Who do we got on the line? All right, I'm going to send you James. Here's James for you. All right, James, you're on the morning show. What do you think the line should do at wide receiver? Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm with you. Don't really care. Um, go, <laughs> it's, a great, go get a, it's a great get a, thing to say. A, yeah. <laughs> um, send, send a third-round pick to a veteran. Uh, draft someone in the second. I mean, who knows? Like you said, Um mm. And and now that you know, I'm kind of like you. I'm kind of ornery. I'm, you know, I'm getting ready to the, with a snow gun to tell the kids off my lawn. You know, I'm, you know. <laughs> I'm with you, man. It's a good feeling. It's a good feeling not having to stress over a certain player. Uh, you know, we did this last year during the draft. It was high stress, high uh, heated debates, heated discussions. Everybody was frustrated. Who this, who that, Malik Willis, Kyle Hamilton. And the general common sense population of this fan base was like, no, we need an edge rusher. And he ended up getting the best one out of the draft class. Congratulations. There you go. I think this year everything's different. No stress, James. Uh, I can I can get used to living my life with no stress being a Lions, uh, a Lions guy. You bet. And then hopefully Jeff kept himself protected this weekend. Uh, you, know. you know, Jeff uh, <laughs> likes to raw dog it. I, I can't lie, James. <laughs> God knows. God knows. Appreciate the call, James. Take care, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Poor Jeff. Dude's not even out working catching strays. Oh, what are you supposed to do, huh? What are you supposed to do? Poor guy. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, look, if you're going to call in, by the way, and you're going to tell me you don't care, honestly, that means the world to me. <laughs> but honestly. like I, You can come up with whatever creative move you want to make. You want to go for some wide receiver nobody's thought of. You want to say it's Judy. You want to say it's Sutton, even though Peyton came out and you know, basically threw that story away. But uh, whatever it is, first round wide receiver, second round, whatever it is, I don't care. Like, I actually, very hard to offend me outside of one pick. There's only one pick that could really offend me. And you guys know who it is already because I don't like it. Uh, I'm not a fan of drafting a wide receiver in the first round of consecutive years. I, I don't think it makes any sense, especially for a guy whose best draft pick, you could argue, was a fourth-round wide receiver. I'm not stressing it. It's just not a, 
It's not a position that I'm going to stress right now. And that's thanks to the good work Brad Holmes has done. Having said that, JB, who's next on the line? Uh, I will send you Charles. Here's Charles for you. All right, Charles. Uh, who knows? Maybe Charles Barkley. But Charles, you're on the morning show. What do you got for us, buddy? <laughs> I got more championships than Charles Barkley. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Adam? I love you so, man. Appreciate it, um, man. Appreciate it. What's up? Yo, I think there's, there's like three, like six foot, um, three, six foot four receivers. The guy, A.T. Perry from Wake Forest. Yep. The kid from Princeton. And that, and that other kid from West Virginia, man, Brad Holmes needs to grab him in the second or third round. I was never a fan of of uh, re-signing Chark because he's always injured, man. Why do we need a guy? Why are we paying a guy $11, 12000000 million? He only plays six games a year. Yeah, look, you know, I, I'm, I'm not on the same page as you in terms of, you know, Chark. I, I didn't really mind it. Uh, especially knowing what he got paid in Carolina. I, I wouldn't have been mad at a one-year, $5 million contract. But uh, to your point, there's a lot of big-bodied wide receivers coming out. And outside of what, Quinn Johnston, none of them are really projected in the first round. It's all second, third, fourth-round picks like you mentioned. I think there's also that kid out of Stanford, by the way, Charles, uh, who's probably, what, 6'4"? So there's there's big-body receivers out there. I just find it difficult to believe he's he, as in Brad Holmes, can invest a first-round pick on a young wide receiver. Uh, to me, Goff has a relationship with Reynolds, Khalif Raymond, developing one with Jamison Williams, and clearly Amon Ra's favorite. So, but do I right. really need to address it in the first round? I don't think so. No, definitely not. Appreciate it, man. Good call, Charles. Have a good rest of your Monday, yep. man. You too. You know... We, uh, we always talk about, especially in this town, right? We always talk about players. Uh, I mean, gosh, our social media team here at Woodward Sports, every player that's available, we fucking say, <laughs> should the Lions go after him. But, you know, shout out to Lucas, by the way. But uh, we're, we're at a different level. And when I say we, uh, I mean this fan base. And I think everybody has kind of grown up over the last 12 months. Because, let's see, how many months ago? Probably seven, eight months ago. Not, eh, seven, eight months ago, probably. Not even. What am I saying? Four or five months ago. Whatever it is. That's not the point. point is, you were one in six, and it was really bad. <laughs> and you had nothing to hold on to. Except maybe that your GM could identify talent. And then they turned it around with eight and two down the stretch. Obviously led to a ton of confidence. Da, da, da. You guys know the history. You don't need me to tell you the story. But the point is, you're going to get calls like this on this show or any other show where everybody is pretty chill and relaxed. Because at the end of the day, if they don't sign any wide receivers, no problem. Because I watched Jared Goff put out a top five offense with Ben Johnson, Khalif Freeman, Josh Reynolds, and Amon Ross St. Brown before Jameson Williams was available and while DJ Chark was hurt. So why do I care? Honestly, why? Right? So that that to me is the best part. That to me is the best part. Is you have a fan base now that is catching up with how it actually works. You want to laugh at somebody right now? You go laugh at the Packers. They have no idea what to do. They have no idea what to do. And you know what? Fuck them. They deserve it. You don't get to go from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers. It is so unfair and unrealistic. And damn it, they did it. And all my life, they've been good. Good. Suck. Suck for the next five years. Good. Fuck you. I don't want to hear it. You know? So to me, fan base getting smarter. Fan base is uh, becoming more tolerable, I think. And when anybody calls into the show over the next three, four, five months leading up to the NFL season, and they say, hey, Adam. Hey, Jeff. Lions are going to win 12 games. Yeah, that's not... It's not a problem to me. Now yeah, I would agree. Who can beat them in the NFC? The Eagles and the Niners. That's all I would do. If I were to put my money on a team that could beat the, beat the Lions this year, and I'm not talking in a one-off. I'm talking chips on the table. Who, do I, who would I bet on? I'd bet the Lions over everybody in the NFC except the Eagles and the Niners. Those are the only two teams. Must be nice. Must be nice. JB, who else we got on the lines, buddy? 
All right, I'm gonna send you Happy Camper here. All right, Happy Camper from the YouTube chat. You're on the morning show. What do you got for us, buddy? Hey, Adam, you're hitting it right on the spot. Uh, this this team doesn't need any of these guys that doesn't want to be here. And Brad Holmes has made it real clear that no matter what he does, it's going to improve the team. It's it's incredible. I'm thinking Calvin Johnson could come in and get his last bit of paycheck, and <laughs> I see him play basketball. He can run. Oh man, we'll put him in there. We'll put him in from uh, 20 yards in. And as far as the quarterback goes, you know, I trust him to figure something out on that too. I think we do need an improvement as a backup. That's a big thing for me because it's. That's the hardest position to keep healthy. We had a lot of luck last year, but, you know, I'd like to win the Super Bowl next year, whether it's with golfers or his backup. So, well, you anyways. Know, well, first of all, good call, Happy. Appreciate you uh, yeah. calling in. Always Thank see you. on the YouTube chat. But uh, what I will say is, one, they were rumored with Teddy Bridgewater over the weekend. And that we have for the second hour I'll get to later. Uh, but to me, uh, there have been anomalies in my life. Nick Foles is definitely the most recent one where you can have massive success uh, with a backup quarterback, right? The uh, New England Patriots that were 16-0 and went 10-6, and I believe, the, the following season with Matt Castle. Uh, you had Brock Purdy last year win 10 straight games. That was unbelievable. Uh, but in most cases, if Jared Goff goes down, guys, season's over. Season's over, and it's not even a discussion. I don't care if you draft a quarterback in the first, second, third round, or you get an unrestricted free agent. I don't really care. Golf goes down, season's over. That's that's almost every that's, NFL team. That's that's when Brad Holmes pulls his magic out and says, okay, Rams, you want to get rid of Stafford? Let's welcome him back, and he can do the LeBron James <laughs> thing. He learned how to win a championship and bring one back. Ooh, no chance. No chance. I would never do it. As much as uh, I'm very happy for Matthew Stafford, uh, absolutely not. But I appreciate the call, Happy. Well done, buddy. Great. Great show. Thank yep, you. yep. Thank you. Look. We'll get to the backup in the second hour, okay? I wanted to focus on wide receiver, but that that is going to be a huge talking point today. Is we need to stop this conversation as if it's so important. It's not. There's not a single team, not Buffalo, not New England, not Kansas City, not Philadelphia, nobody in the NFL outside of, by the way, the Niners, who are just completely the anomaly because they have an all-pro at every position except quarterback. The Niners, Kyle Shanahan has proven he can actually win with second, third strings. Congratulations. It's not ideal. It's not ideal. So any of these contenders, you look around the NFL, the Eagles, you look at the Chiefs, you look at the Bengals, they lose their quarterbacks, they're done. It's the same for the Lions. Jared Goff misses 10 games this year. You might as well lose them all. You got nothing to play for. Jared Goff misses the season. You're fucked. Jared Goff goes down with four games remaining, and he's out for the year, including playoffs. Well, yeah, you'd want to fight till the end and try to lock up the division and try to get to the playoffs. Yeah, and I'd imagine you'd have a good record with four games remaining. Probably only need to win two of them to clinch the division. Do you need a competent backup, whether it's a rookie or a Teddy Bridgewater, to maybe make you two and two and then just ride out the season like you saw the Miami Dolphins, get to the playoffs with a backup quarterback, disaster, there's nothing you can do? Fine. Fine. That I can agree with. But the reality is your season's over the second Jared Goff goes down. And... I have no reason to believe he will. Well, because he's not injury prone. And he's been very, relatively very healthy his entire career. So I have no concerns. Having said that, we'll take a break. When we get back, uh, we'll get to more of your calls. Fan mock drafts coming up. Boy, they've changed. Boy, they've changed with all the signings. I can't wait to get to my mock draft at 9 o'clock, top of the hour. It's going to be fun. It's the fifth edition. Always going to be fun. And then 845, we'll get to... Of course, the news with Teddy Bridgewater being rumored. 
What does it mean for the Lions draft strategy? We'll go through all this, of course, coming up and so much more. But before we go, JB, our good friends over at Swiss Insurance. Yes, let me tell you about Swiss Insurance. Be, be sure to check with them this week for your commercial insurance review. Many businesses choose a one-to-one -one effective date, and Swiss can help make sure you have the proper coverage. Email Mark today at mark at swissins.com. Give them a shot. Guarantee you won't be disappointed. By now you know me, Christina Gennari, as the obvious choice in real estate. And you know my website, soldchristina.com, as your number one resource for buying or selling your home. Myself, along with my amazing staff, pride ourselves on making your home buying and selling experience a relaxing and easy one. Come see why we are the obvious choice. Christina Gennari at soldchristina.com, the obvious choice in real estate. <sighs> Three NBA championships. Detroit fans were there. 11 Stanley Cups. Detroit fans were there. Four World Series wins. Detroit fans were there. And uh, that one Lions playoff win in 1991. Yeah, Detroit fans were there. Woodward Sports, where the fans are. All right. 8.31. Monday morning, kick off the week. Uh, we'll have a fun show today. No Jeff, I have Freddie. Hope he feels better. Voice is a little loose, uh, a little sour. God knows what he put in his mouth this weekend. <laughs> oh, man. But today's going to be a fun show. Phone lines are open. 313-552-6322. Uh, we'll get to your fan mock drafts. Yeah, I've seen a lot of mocks. For better or for worse, I've seen the Quentin Johnston ones. I've seen uh, even Peter Skronsky, which at six isn't the most urgent need. But, you know, I, I've seen what you've all sent. And it's really changed over the last few weeks. Let's go through the signings. CJ Gardner-Johnson, Cameron Sutton, Emmanuel Mosley. Start there in the secondary. Very solid. Very, very, very happy with that. You re-signed some of the key players that you wanted to keep going into the offseason. Uh, you had Isaiah Bugs, John Kaminsky, Alex Anzalone. Great. No problem. Moving forward. But, to me, Brad Holmes' work is showing up in all of your mock drafts, to be honest with you, because you've all changed. The idea of drafting a corner at six, which, by the way, from the start was a complete sham that you would even consider it. But, okay, no problem. I let it go. Now that's been even you pass on one at 18. And, you know, I, I've seen mock drafts where it's Joey Porter Jr., it's Devon Witherspoon. Okay, Look, the reality is you have two corners on a one-year deal. Ideally, Gardner-Johnson is here in the future, but, again, he's looking to get paid. He's looking to get Darius Slay-type money. And if I were him and I ball out in Detroit, yeah, I'm trying to get taken care of at a position where, let's be honest, most contenders aren't shelling out top three money. Now, top seven, top eight, top ten money, yeah, they'll do it. And I think that's what the Lions need to figure out is, can Gardner Johnson be their future? I think he can. He's a young man. Great swagger. Great attitude. I think it's what you want in Detroit. But your mock drafts tell me that you're not banking on it. Because I'm seeing a lot of Porter at 18. I'm seeing a lot of Devon Witherspoon in trade-ups. I'm seeing a lot of Christian Gonzalez at 6. And when you ask me, me, again, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying that my idea is the best idea. But what I'm telling you is there are needs that you can't not address. At six in this draft, to me, defensive interior lineman is a must pick. Or even edge I can live with. Now, for all of you, including Jeff, who think Will Anderson is somehow a possibility, be my guest. I would sign off on that pick every day of the week. No problem. But I don't expect that to happen. And I, I don't typically like to work with boards that aren't realistic. What I mean by realistic is, if I'm a GM, am I going to pass on this guy if I'm at pick 12, 13, 14? Am I going to pass on this guy at 17? 
and he's somehow going to be there at 18. Nah, that, that's how I think. That doesn't mean you have to be that way. That doesn't mean you have to build your mocks around that way. But what it means is, I'm not going to waste my time having a conversation about a corner at 6, let alone even one at 18. It's very tough for me to imagine a year where Jeff Okuda, Emmanuel Mosley, C.J. Gardner-Johnson will all be on contracts that will be expiring this year. Great. If they all perform relatively at the level you expect, you will re-sign one of the three, and that's Gardner-Johnson. And that would be your priority. And then you would go into free agency again, and you would try to find a veteran corner on a one-year deal. Or you could look to the draft, but may I remind you, Cam Sutton's on a three-year deal. So you have Cameron Sutton. In theory, you would have Gardner Johnson for the future. You'd move off of Jer uh, Jeff Okuda, who, by the way, um, let me check my fake watch. I'm still waiting. Because I was told by very, very <laughs> respected, trustworthy, non-biased journalists, keyword non-biased journalists, that Jeff Okuda would prove me wrong and, quote, bump, bump the idea that Jeff Okuda was a bust in Detroit or that he isn't one of the greatest busts we've ever seen in Detroit. He's up there. And the idea that he's a good player. How? If Jeff Okuda is a good player, your general manager doesn't go out and sign three cornerbacks within a week. The, the GM does more of the talking for me. I, I think it matters what he says, right? I would imagine Brad Holmes is smart enough to realize Jeff Okuda is probably a really good number three option. And that's what he's going to be this year. Emmanuel Mosley coming off an ACL, probably a slow start to the season. He probably won't find his form until midseason. Jeff Okuda going to get a lot of time early on. You're going to have Gardner Johnson lining up in the slot. He's going to be playing. He's the most versatile player you have in the second inning right now. And that's on top of Tracy Walker coming back. Oh, and Kirby Joseph. So what are my needs? My needs are you can never have too many too many edges in my opinion just my opinion i don't think you can ever have too many and you look at the san francisco 49ers adding john hargraves my goodness must be nice you want to reflect a similar model you want a disruptive defensive unit ali mcneil james houston aiden hutchinson john kaminsky isaiah bugs josh pascal just to name the six so far cool it's nice no one's banking on levi o so, Jalen Carter, Kalijah Kansi, to me, that's pick six. I'm not moving off of it. Uh, I don't think there are two other choices other than them at six. I would be shocked, and I really mean this. I would be shocked if Brad Holmes drafted anybody outside of an interior defensive lineman or edge at six. Corner, quarterback, receiver, whatever the hell you want to tell me. I would be shocked. If he went any other direction, I would. I would be completely floored by the idea. Now, James Houston, you cut him, brought him on the practice squad, put him back on the team. He's only on a two-year deal, which is now one year left. So I'm not even going to bank on my future on James Houston. Was he lightning in a bottle last year? He absolutely was. I'm not banking on that level of production this year. I'm just not. If he gets six sacks this year, I would be impressed. I would. If he got six, I would be very impressed by him. But to expect him to get almost a sack a game, it's not going to happen. It's just not. That's what I, ideally what I'm paying Aiden Hutchinson for. And that's what I'm going to draft an interior defensive lineman, ideally at six for. Or I can go edge, in theory, if Jalen Carter is off the board and Tyree Wilson is sitting there in your lap at six. You, you have to consider edge. No problem. You want to consider Tyree Wilson? Be my guest. You want to tell me Kalaja Kenzie? Be my guest. No problem. But the Lions don't have the ability to trade back. And again, the most important thing here is I don't know. I don't. And I won't lie to you. 
I like to think I know when I say that the Lions have zero trade back potential. I, I believe that. Atlanta signed a quarterback. The Raiders signed a quarterback. Who's moving up? The Eagles are at 10. The Bears are at 9. Atlanta 8. The Raiders 7. So you can't even trade into the top 10 still. You can't even go back to 10. When you want to talk about the Lions trading back, it's got to be at 12, 13, 14. And do you want to trade back 8 spots in this draft? I don't think so. You know why? One reason. Three quarterbacks are going to go top 5. And you know what those draft classes mean? That means it's teams between 5, 6, 7, and 8 land real fucking studs. Most recent example, Trevor Lawrence went 1, Zach Wilson 2, Trey Lance 3. Atlanta said, thank you, Kyle Pitts. Cincinnati said, thank you, Jamar Chase. Miami said, thank you, Jalen Waddell. And the Lions said, thank you, Panay Sewell. Oh, wait, I'm not done. Carolina said, thank you, J.C. Horn. Denver said, thank you, Patrick Sertan. And Dallas said, thank you, Micah Parsons. I love these drafts. I love them. Take all the quarterbacks for all I care. Please. It means more for me. So that's what I think. I could be wrong. And I'll hold my hand up first and admit it. Maybe I am. I don't think I am, but I could be. It's not definitive. I don't think there's a trade back partner this year. And I wouldn't want them to trade back now that Carolina has moved up. I wouldn't want them to trade back. Because sitting there at six will be a player who in most drafts likely goes in the top four. It's good value if you ask me. It's good value if you ask me. So that's what I think of all your mocks that you've submitted. That's what I think of all the changes. That's what I think of the players that are available. And that's what I think of the GM. Is I don't have to question the GM anymore. I don't. Do Not only do. Am I well within my right to want something over the other if i want something to really happen and brad goes another way sure sure i can question i can be upset i can be upset all along who gives a shit who cares the guy can identify talent it's what he's best at you had question marks over his ability to operate in free agency i believe we can all agree he's answered uh, that issue which is no longer an issue, and it never really was. Never really was. So yeah, when I tell you guys I don't care, that's what I mean by I don't care, is I have a million reasons to care, which allow me not to. As weird as that sounds. So would you trade back? Would you move out of the top 10 in this draft? I don't think you would. I don't think you would. And that's why if you're all honest with yourselves, you would look at three players and look at them very seriously for pick number six. Tyree Wilson, Jalen Carter, Kalaja Kansi. Those are the three that you really consider. And look, I'm not going to be the guy that sit here, sits here and says, Jalen Carter is not a phenomenal prospect. I'm not going to do that. It's a lie. He's unbelievable. He's unbelievable. Most thought, the best defensive prospect coming into this draft. Will Anderson gets the nod, of course. No doubt. No problem. But Jalen Carter was Mr. Disruptive. And now he's Mr. Disruptive for all the wrong reasons. I have a problem with it. Will the GM of your football team have a problem with it? Who knows? Who, who is it? That's the fun part. 9 o'clock, I'll share who I took in... Monday, well, excuse me, Monday, in today's latest mock draft on a Monday morning, 8.44, live, the morning Woodward show, woodwardsports.com, JB in the studio with us, Broder, Jeff out sick, God knows what he put in his mouth, and I'll keep saying that the rest of the show, because, well, he's not here to defend himself, so, we'll get to all that and more coming up next, but before we go, here's what we're going to do, I'm going to tell you about my good friends over at Planet Fitness, and then when we get back, we're going to dive into more of this draft strategy. At 9 o'clock, I'll share my mock draft. You know what? I think we should do Jeff's. I think we should review Jeff's mock draft. Damn it. He's not here, but we're doing it. I don't give a shit. So we'll get to Jeff's mock draft coming up next. And then we'll get to mine at 9 o'clock. 
and then we'll start taking callers again and we'll have a good second hour all right but before we go i gotta tell you about my good friends over at planet fitness sign up today no down payment required ten dollars a month zero down what are you waiting for huh your fitness is essential guys if there's one thing you should understand about life yeah you only live once and all this stuff but you only have one body and how you take care of it will determine how it takes care of you in the long run and there's no better way to take care of yourself by then getting to the gym all right planet fitness visit one of their many local locations or by signing up at planetfitness.com at work and at home we're there with smarter security solutions featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm, we protect Michigan. Get a shot up, this is for the win! All of Detroit sports teams live on Woodward. All of Detroit sports coverage lives on Woodward Sports. Driving the best in Detroit sports coverage. 8.46 on a Monday morning. I hope you all had a very, very good weekend. Uh, I mentioned this to start the show. The men's game. Don't give a crap at all. Men's college basketball. Total joke. Uh, it's March Madness. It's kind of amazing. FAU getting to the Final Four. First nine seed, I think, since 2013. UConn got, gets to the Final Four. Good for them. Miami and uh, last team, San Diego State. So there you have it. Congratulations. Good for you guys. Uh, the women's bracket, I think, is more entertaining, actually, this year. I found the women's tournament to be much better than the men's. Maybe it's just me, shockingly. Or it could be my bias and love for that Louisville girl. Haley something. I don't know. Phenomenal. Great attitude. Looks great, too. Never hurts to look great, right? Having said that, Jeff's mock draft. So Jeff isn't here to defend his mock draft, so I'm not going to sit here and ridicule it or criticize it. What I'm going to do, though, is ask you guys what you think. So all of you at home control the next 13 minutes. All right, we got 13 minutes before the top of the hour. I want to know what you think of Jeff's mock draft. Alex, if you don't mind, you can just throw it up on the screen, and we'll start diving into this. Jeff makes no trades, and he does the thing that I really just don't think will happen, which is Will Anderson sitting there at six. Jeff, I would love to think this is true. If you walked away with those first two picks, uh, I would run down Woodward and not all over the concrete. I would. I would. Hey, yo! Butt naked. No no regard for anybody around me. I don't care. That's what, exactly what I would do. Will Anderson at 6. Really nice. Kalija Kansi at 18. Again, unrealistic, but really nice. Nice. So I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on the first round picks because I just don't think it's realistic. I don't. And you know what? We're going to run into this issue with my mock at 9 o'clock. Because at pick 18... Somebody fell to my lap that I just wouldn't have imagined that I've never, ever, ever considered drafting. But he was there at 18. And how do I not? Like, uh, what are you supposed to do? And that's the thing with these mocks. They're very unpredictable. But let's go to round two. Deion Henley, solid pick, linebacker. Uh, in this iteration of Jeff's mock draft, Jack Campbell with 33, by the way. And you want to know where he went in mine? 31. Jack Campbell's a borderline first-round pick right now. That's not happening, unfortunately, for Detroit. As much as I would love that kind of guy in Detroit, very unlikely that he's going to end up at Detroit line. Second-round pick, Sidney Brown moving up on the board. Draft, uh, drafted at 55 in this iteration, I believe, three weeks ago. Jeff had him going in the third round at 81 to Detroit. Round three, Devon. I don't know how to say his last name, so I'm just going to say Achen. A-Chain, that's a hell of a last name, A-Chain. Uh, he's a running back, and I'm not a fan. It's not that I'm not a fan because I actually have no idea who this player is. I'm not a fan of taking the running back that early. I think if you're going to go on a third-round running back because you don't have a fourth-round pick, to me it's Chase Brown. That's my ideal pick, 
Uh, Zach Charbonnet is not going to be on the board there. Uh, Jameer Gibbs not going to be on the board at 81. But, again, I don't mind it. Solid, solid board by Jeff. Round five gets a guard. Round six, Bryce Ford Wheaton, solid wide receiver, big bodied wide receiver. I have no problem with it. Aiden O'Connell, not my favorite quarterback to draft if you're going to take one, but I can live with it. Solid board by Jeff. And it, it's an A because of the first two picks. And I, how do you not? Honestly. Like, what grade would you guys give? So now I'll go to you guys. I'll read your comments. You can call in 313-552-6322. JB, here, hit me with it. What do you What do you think of this? Uh, it's not bad. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm going to give it a A, but I'll give it a well, you solid have B+. To. Plus. No? The, the first four picks are, are solid, are nice. The rest of the guys on the board, I don't really know too much about them, aside from the Aiden O'Connell dude, just because he's from Purdue, but... Other than that, the rest of the guys, it's just, yeah, it's hit or miss. You're taking a hit or miss on the rest of them. But the solid, the first four picks are solid. I mean, as you said, how do you not? <laughs> yeah, I would agree that the first four picks are solid, but that's why he gets an A to me. That's why B, Jeff B gets plus, an A. A, a minus. He know? gets an A because although it's very unrealistic, although it's very, very unrealistic, it's still a f freaking insane board. To get an edge and interior defensive lineman, who I think are arguably the two best at their their position coming out at six and eighteen. Oh, get out of here! Forget about it. Forget about it. Right? And you're all, you all agree in the chat, by the way. All of you, <laughs> all of you. You're all giving Jeff an A. But Kevin Kelty says something I, I think is very important to say this morning. Jeff gets an A. A for ain't happening I agree <laughs> right, I, I do good. I do I it's so unrealistic it's just not gonna happen and that's okay though but it's a good board it, it is it's a good board and for any, anybody giving him less than a B plus I think you're fucking crazy if I told you walk away with Kalaja Kansi Will Anderson the rest of the board you don't even care about you just wouldn't let's go to the callers let's see what the callers think J JB who do we got on the line all right, let me send you Scott for you. Scott, you saw Jeff's mock. Will Anderson, 6. Kalijah Kansi, 18. What do you think? Give him a grade. He gets an A. Yeah. Tough not to, huh? Oh, no. It, it, it's really hard not to because, I mean, he did a, he did address two of the most important parts of the defense that need to be addressed right in the first round. <laughs> so, I mean, it's kind of hard to argue with it. And then to touch on your whole DJ chart thing, I really don't care. But on the if I would, I would go and grab Jackson Smith and Jigba out of Ohio State. That's uh, very interesting you say that because to me, Jackson Smith and Jimba, uh, phenomenal receiver, phenomenal talent. Uh, I, again, he's six foot. Is he going to fill the role of DJ Chark? No, he's just going to be another... I don't want to call him a slot option, but he's just going to be a guy that doesn't really make sense in this offense to me. Uh, is he a very good player? Yeah, will Brad Holmes, or excuse me, will Ben Johnson make it work? Sure. Uh, do I want talented players on the offense? Sure, but I, I have a hard time spending a first-round pick this year on a wide receiver only because... Jared Goff gave me a top 10 offense for really the first seven, eight games of the year without Shark, without Jameson Williams, with an injured Amon Ross St. Brown who missed probably two, two and a half of those games, Khalif Raymond and Josh Reynolds. Uh, I'm going to take my, I'm going to bet on Ben Johnson and Jared Goff to figure it out without me having to spend a first round pick. Not going to lie, I was going to agree with you there. I was actually going to say he'd be a perfect slot receiver, but like you said with the whole Tigers and Alavila, Jared Goff went and got a bag of peanuts and turned it into a brick of gold. Yep. 100%, man. Appreciate the call, Scott. Well done, buddy. Thank you. Have a great day, Adam. You too, man. You know, okay, so I don't want to focus too much on the grade because to me the grade is irrelevant. It matters. Like, hey, what do you guys think of this? Give it a grade. But position-wise, what do you want to see? 
If it's not what Jeff did in the first round, what is it? Is it a wide receiver like Scott suggested? I don't agree. That doesn't mean you're wrong. I just don't agree. That doesn't mean I hate you. I just don't agree. So, what is it? Look, Jeff's mock, and you can throw it up full screen if you don't mind for a second. Jeff's mock is phenomenal. Edge. Interior defensive lineman. Grabs a linebacker in the second round like you would want. Safety in the uh, second round. Cool. No problem. Gets you a running back. Takes a chance on a receiver later on. Takes a chance on a guard that you're not too really hung up on. Like, cool, whatever. But what is it going to be? What would you rather see? Would you rather see an offensive lineman at 18? Wait till you see my mock. You won't believe who fell to me at 18. I just gave you a hint. And you should put one and two together there. Offensive lineman in the second round? So what is it? It's a good board. I love Jeff. I think very unrealistic. But that's the point of doing this. You guys have seen me do a mock live on this show. And literally the worst case scenario happened every time. And sometimes the best case happens like what Jeff put on the board. Again. Again. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Shad says he wants more linebackers. Uh, Jacob says he's not a fan of Cansey. No way Will Anderson will be there at six. I would agree on the Anderson part. Uh, how many of these would make the team? I, I think his first three picks would make the team, or excuse me, his first five picks in the first three rounds would make the team 100%. I think his first five picks would make the team 100%, no doubt. All right. Uh, what other comments do we have here before we take another call? Uh, love how we aren't grading mocks on players who literally haven't played. Got some. <laughs> you guys are mean. You guys are mean. Uh, it's BPA first round for sure. There'll be playmakers. Okay, Neil. Best player available. And that's what happened in my mock, by the way. I went best player available at 18. I didn't go BPA at 6. But if it's BPA at 18, who's off limits? Wide receiver? What position is off limits at 18? That's BPA. Don't tell me Bijan. He's not going to be there. So what is it? Who is it? Who's off limits at 18? What position group? That you absolutely wouldn't take. BPA. Quarterback? Wide receiver? Who? I want to know. JB, let's take one more call before we have to go to break. All right, I got you here. I'll send you Jim. Jim, you're on the morning show. Uh, what do you think of Jeff's mock? Uh, anything you would change? Uh, can you hear me? Yep, yep. Hear you loud and clear. What's going on, bro? What's up, man? Uh, so I agree I agree with you, man. I think Jeff's draft is unrealistic, so i give it a... I mean, if that happened, A+. Plus, but <laughs> realistically, I don't, I don't see it. So I, I, I can't really even give it a grade. But, um... At six, to be honest with you, man, I really, I'm almost starting to hope Jalen Carter is off the board because I don't even want to have to make that decision like, well, y'all passed on uh, Jalen Carter. Like, well, we build in here, man, with Aiden Hutchinson and, like, all the nucleus of guys. Everybody don't got to be told to work, man. Like, how he showed up for the pro day and all that, that's, that's rubbing me wrong. Like, is he an unbelievable talent? Hell yeah. But, like, I could look past that. I want somebody who... Like, we ain't got a babysit. Like, I look on the Lee McNeil uh, social media. I look on Aiden. These guys are working. They're working hard as hell already. So, like, I want somebody, like, dependable and, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I would just agree, want something man. else. But I agree, Jim. To, to get to your point at 18, what's off the board to me is wide receiver and tight end. Nice. I don't want neither position. Nice. I think Jamison Williamson, what they looking at him to do this year, I think they looking for him to take that jump that Jamar Chase did. Like, once he started playing. Like, Jamar Chase, all of a sudden, started being looked at as a top five player. But originally, he wasn't. Like, he was dropping balls in the preseason and all that. Yep. But I think they're looking at J-Mo to take that type of a jump so we can add wide receiver whenever the hell we add it. I don't even give a hell. Hey, so, you know what, Jim? I agree I 100% think. with you on that. Tight end wide receiver for me, off limits at 18. Good job, man. Appreciate the call, Jim. 
All right, have a good one, man. You too, man. All right, we'll take a break. When we get back, I, I want to touch on one point to go off Jim and what he said coming back out of the break. Then we'll get to my mock at 9 o'clock. 9.15, Teddy Bridgewater, backup quarterback situation. We'll get to that and so much more. But before we go, I got to tell you about my good friends over at Cousins Main Lobster. What are you waiting for? Scan the QR code on your screen or go to CousinsMainLobster.com. Find out where their food trucks are going to be. Start the week off right. If you're not fasting, there's no better way than to start with lobster tacos, clam chowder soup on a Michigan morning. Do it for lunch. You'll thank me later. Let them know Adam from Woodward Sports sent you. CousinsMainLobster.com. The lobster tacos, clam chowder soup. You'll thank me later. Check them out. Saturdays at 1 p.m. Make sure you're watching WoodwardSports.com for our new show. Chomping Puck. He shoots. He scores. With four-time Stanley Cup champion Darren McCarty and Michael Gentry. Chomping Puck is taking the Detroit hockey community and giving them a voice. Pros to Joes. You'll get the best Detroit hockey coverage around. Chomping Puck. Saturdays 1 p.m. on WoodwardSports.com. You're about to be shell-shocked. The catch of the day is in. Big Boy Seafood Fest is officially back. Join us for some of your favorites like our popcorn shrimp and pike perch platters and our classic fish and chips. This year, we've reeled in some fresh catches like our shrimp alfredo, shrimp stir fry, and our fish sandwich. And especially, don't forget about our all-you-can-eat Friday night fish fry buffet. Every day is a fish fry Big boy. My name is Lee. I've lost 35 pounds on the Custom Health Center program. So the three biggest benefits that I've gotten from this, uh, this program has been I'm not snoring anymore, I have a lot of energy, uh, it's great, and oh by the way, look at this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Call us at 844-789-THIN or visit customhealthcenters.com for a free consultation and get started for as little as $5 a day. The only sports network in Detroit that starts with a W. You know, because we win. Woodward Sports, Detroit's winning sports network. All right, top of the hour, 9.02 here on the Morning Woodward Show live, woodwardsports.com. Missing the show live, you can always check it back later on. Download the podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find the Morning Woodward Show. Uh, drop us a five-star review. Make sure you let know, uh, excuse me, make sure you let Jeff know that you like his hair and that you like the idea of him missing a show because, well, he put things that he probably shouldn't have in his mouth this weekend. Hey, do you want to take yo. that? That's up to you. It's not my job to tell you what Jeff was doing this weekend. My job is only to get your imagination brewing, right? So here's what we're going to do. Before I get to my mock, okay, I think it's very important I address something off the gym call, okay? Jim mentioned the tight end off limits, wide receiver off limits, uh, BPA, uh, defensive lineman Jalen Carter, right? Guys, how many of us have jobs, right? We could just raise our hands cool everybody in this room obviously has a job everybody at home i'd like to imagine most of you have jobs if you don't uh for whatever reason you're laid off at the moment you're looking for a work whatever you've all worked somewhere okay and then there's the select few of you that have managed somewhere okay i'm not saying work but you know you managed a place whether you managed the marketing team or uh, you managed a, a retail store whatever it is you're interviewing somebody and somebody comes in and botches the interview completely do you strongly consider them if they don't fit the culture they don't check off the boxes you need when you're trying to hire somebody on the staff uh it's complicated and every field i would say is different right when we're uh you know when you're hiring a developer for example you want the most technically sound dev right you want a guy that'll problem solve at a level that you just can't at the moment cool but what if he's an asshole? And what if he has a problem waking up on time? And what if he meets his deadlines, but at least once a week will promise you something and then doesn't deliver? Would you rather have the super talented guy or the guy that always is on time, always hits his deadlines, means what he says, and says what he means? Uh, I think you're leading the second guy. And that's really what the lines are building here. 
Aiden Hutchinson, Amon Ross St. Brown, guys that put their head down and work. This is why I'm concerned with Jalen Carter. It's why I'm going to pass on him in literally a minute and a half. This is why I'm going to pass on Jalen Carter. And he was available to me, and I don't care. I want to be able to sleep at night knowing you're putting in work that'll take care of your family and your future, and you're going to be a stud on the field for this football team. And I'm not saying Jalen Carter is a, necessarily a problem right now, but he could be. And he's trending in the direction of becoming a problem, no matter how talented he is. Now, is this uh, like Micah Parsons with hazing? Uh, no, completely different. Micah Parsons showed out at the Combine. Parsons showed out in every aspect leading up to the draft. And yes, had questions about hazing. So don't use the Micah Parsons example. When we talk about defensive linemen, you want ruthless. I'll just I'll, I'll name off a few things I want in a defensive lineman, okay? And you guys tell me if it's Jalen Carter. Committed. Ruthless. High motor. Will. The will to succeed and the will to fail. It's okay to do both. Somebody I don't have to worry about. Strong character. I would say an excellent jump off the line of scrimmage if you want to go to the football side of things. And Jalen Carter checks a lot of the football stuff. But when I have to hear the stuff I hear about him, and when I have to watch his pro day, and I think that's the worst thing he did. When you watch that pro day, how do you sit there and say, objectively, we're going to invest the sixth overall pick in that guy? And maybe he goes somewhere else. And maybe he's an absolute home run. Fine. I can live with that. I can live with my GM choosing... I can live with my GM choosing a guy that's going to fit long-term and short-term than a guy who is a wild card. And look, I'm not saying you don't want wild cards on your team or that they're not good. They're obviously very good. you got to have the right culture to allow them to really thrive in it. Uh, Jalen Ramsey thrived in L.A. because there was Aaron Donald. Uh, there was the offensive lineman, I forget his name, before he retired. And there was Sean McVay. There was a nucleus there. It made sense. But this is why I think you pass on Jalen Carter. I just do. And again, it could bite you in the ass. It could bite me in the ass. And I'm okay with that. I am. I'm not going to sit here and say he's not a great football player or that he's not a phenomenal prospect. I'm not. I'm not going to say that. That'd be a lie. I think it's very hard to pass on him, but I think you do. So we'll get to my mock draft. This is my fifth version. This should be fun. Uh, a player I did not expect to fall to me at 18. I hinted offensive lineman earlier. You guys, if you could put one and two together, you'd know exactly who it is. Alex, go ahead and throw it up on the screen. Uh, this is my mock draft. I haven't changed who I'm getting at six. You guys should know me by now. Kalijah Kansi, pick six. Will Anderson wasn't available. Tyree Wilson wasn't available. Jalen Carter was, but I passed, and I took... Kalijah Kansi at pick 18 I was floored by this I couldn't believe it Peter Skronsky I mean come on look I know you signed Gla uh, Glasgow I know you signed uh, I know you have Decker to a contract I know you have Panay Sewell but to me when we talk about BPA I, I don't think that's a wrong decision I don't know how you go wrong by taking arguably the best offensive lineman in this draft at 18 I don't think that's realistic, if I'm honest with you. I don't. But I was floored when he was available. And I'll be damned if I pass on him and come on the show and tell you the next morning, hey guys, this offensive lineman was available, I passed. I'm a smart ass. Not doing it. Not doing it. Not passing on Peter Skronsky. I followed Jeff. Jack Campbell in my mock went 31. I had no, I had no hope. Deion Henley... Solid. You could have argued over Sean, but for me, uh, any linebacker in round two is I'm okay with. I wanted Jack Campbell, but he outperformed expectations at the combine. He was more athletic than people gave him credit for. 
He was the best or top two in terms of cover. Uh, linebackers among all Power 5 schools in uh, FBS. Come on. Unlucky. Wanted Jack Campbell. Probably not going to happen. Deion Henley, I'll settle. This is my favorite pick of the draft board, though. Jalen Hyatt, pick 55. He's never been available at 55. I couldn't believe it. I was very happy. I was very excited. The idea of Chark not being here and replacing Chark with a guy that can stretch the field, sign me up. And, you know, we, we really misdiagnose who Jameson Williams is all the time, and I, I laugh at it. He's not a stretch-the-field guy. Can his speed stretch the field? Absolutely. Can he run deep crossing routes? Absolutely. Can he run go routes? Absolutely. It's not his bread and butter. He's a yards-after-catch guy. He's underneath, make explosive plays. You saw it all throughout the end of the season. Every time he touched the ball, it was an explosive play. Jalen Hyatt, to me, fills a need, fills a role, and I can live with the idea of a second-round wide receiver. I can live with it. Third round, Jamie Robinson. You can never have too many secondary players. Uh, like we all acknowledged, Emmanuel Mosley, Gardner Johnson on one-year deals. Gardner Johnson probably going to get a huge contract after this year in Detroit. I would expect him to have a successful season. So if you can't re-sign him, well, you follow the Eagles draft model, right? You have very good players on short expiring deals, and you draft the year and years prior to make sure that you can replace them in the future. I don't mind this at all. Keaton Mitchell, you guys know I feel every single time at pick 153, I've taken a running back, and I will never change it. Fifth round running back, no risk, no risk at all. Keaton Mitchell, speedy back, I think fills exactly what you want, what you think a running back should be, and there's no risk. Backup quarterback, Stetson Bennett, sixth round pick, again, no risk. Who am I going to take in the sixth round that's going to play day one on this team? Uh, the team is pretty filled up at the moment. It needs interior defensive linemen. You could use an offensive lineman. You could use a linebacker. You could use a wide receiver. But outside of that, it is covered across the board now. This team is ready to win. And, of course, Jake Moody. I'm a fan of taking a kicker. Badgley, good dude. I, I need a dude who can kick over 50 yards. Jake Moody, high-pressure situations at Michigan all the time. Nailed some clutch field goals throughout his career at Michigan. Sign me up. That's my mock. You guys can grade it however you'd like. You can tell me that Kalijah Kansi is too high of a pick at six. I would love to know why. I would love to know why. I would love to know why Kalijah Kansi is a risk or, quote, uh, I would love to know why Kalijah Kansi is a, how would I say it? I'd love to know why he's a risk or a reach at 13 when only Tyree Wilson, Devon Witherspoon, Jalen Carter, and Will Anderson are ranked higher. He's the fifth highest rated defensive player coming out. Fifth. I lied. Sixth. Christian Gonzalez is also ahead of him. Excuse me. Kalaja Kansi is the sixth highest rated defensive player in this upcoming draft. You tell me it's a reach. Because you're not taking Devon Witherspoon or Christian Gonzalez at six. So you move them two off the board, he becomes the fourth highest rated player coming out. Only behind Jalen Carter, Will Anderson, Tyree Wilson. That's a reach. If that's a reach, I don't know what a good pick is in the draft anymore. Maybe I am an idiot. And to those of you that think the fourth highest rated defensive lineman is going to be available at 18 good for you good for you i'm glad you've watched the nfl draft all your life and have zero understanding of how it works i'm glad that you've watched the nfl as long as i have if not more and i'm glad you have no understanding of how it works see right now the most important positions in football are quarterback wide receiver Offensive lineman, defensive lineman. How, whatever order you want to put them in, that's up to you. I don't really care. But those are the four most important positions. It's undeniable. See, uh, if you don't have a quarterback, or let, let's map it out this way. You have a quarterback, okay? You want to give that quarterback protection and weapons. Wide receiver, offensive lineman. Cool. 
Well, how do you negate the opposing team's quarterback that does have a good offensive line and good weapons like a Joe Burrow, uh, Jamar Chase, and a good offensive line? Well, how do you negate that? You draft Aiden Hutchinson. You draft players like Nick Bosa, John Hargraves, Kalijah Kansi, Will Anderson, Tyree Wilson, Jalen Carter. Defensive line. You can never have too many of them. And remember, Detroit, your best, the best you've been in my lifetime, and I was born in 94, so I don't remember any of the glory years in 91, 93. Just scrap it. Your best years were when you were deep at the defensive line position. Vanden Bosch, Cliff Averill, Ziggy Ansah, Dominican Sue, Nick Fairley. You guys can make the comparison to whoever you want for Kalaja Kansi. I'm not even going to call him Aaron Donald. I think that's grossly irresponsible. I think it's extremely irresponsible to label anybody the next Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald is one of the three, four greatest players in NFL history on the defensive side of the ball. History. Yeah, I'm not comparing anybody to him. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is realize this kid was uber productive, is explosive off the line of scrimmage, is not undersized. Yes, his arms are short. Fine. I can live with it. He gets off the line quicker than most. He knows how to leverage his body. His core strength, phenomenal. I'm not losing sleep over Kalaja Kansi. I'm not. So maybe it is a reach to take the fourth highest rated defensive lineman at six. When two of them are likely going to be off the board. So think about that. I keep breaking it down and it still doesn't make sense to you guys. Tyree Wilson and Will Anderson are off the board. Let's say they go in the top five. That means the Lions would take the second highest rated available defensive lineman at six. And that's a reach. Only behind Jalen Carter. That would be a reach. That would be a reach. I have a dude delivering me beer right now, just so you guys know. I swear to God, I'm not making this up. This is actually happening. <laughs> What's up, buddy? I'm great, man. I'm great. Thanks for the beer. <laughs> My wife's going to be very happy about this. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. God bless. God bless. Well, look, Alex, let's take a break. When we get back, uh, backup quarterback. I want to have the conversation. Teddy Bridgewater rumored uh, with the Lions. What do you guys think about it? Is it the right move? Should they draft one? We'll get to all that and more coming up next. But before we go, JB, our good friends over at the Sports Marketing Agency. That's right. I got you. The Sports Marketing Agency helps spread awareness about mental health and substance abuse. Their new podcast, This is the S Word, helps fight the stigma about seeking help. If you or someone you know is struggling, head over to thesportsma.com right now and get some help. Love Woodward Sports. Love wearing clothes. Then you should be wearing Woodward Sports clothes. Check out our full line of merch at woodwardsports.com. Just click on shop. We have all your favorite designs like Dan Campbell kneecaps, Beverly Hills golf, Woodward golf, and of course, our own logoed out merchandise. Men, women, infants, kids all love Woodward Sports. Impress your friends. Impress your boss. Impress your dog. Buy Woodward Sports merch today. Introducing the Planet Fitness Guide to getting that post-workout glow. Step one, what's your why? More epic energy, better sleep, blow off steam? Step two, join Planet Fitness for just $10 a month and get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. Step three, bask in that post-workout glow. Join Planet Fitness today for just $10 a month. Join today at any of the 50 plus Detroit area locations. It's a great day to get some sense around in your life. Ah, okay, okay, okay. There it is, there it is. Sense around, here we go. Gotta grab the cranberry. Oh wait, it's two for four. Gotta double up with the classic as well. Sense around, world, baby. Sense around, available at select Kroger's, and if you wanna know how, go to at sensroundworld.com. You get dope like me. You know what? Why wait? Great taste, guaranteed.
field at Network 4 Detroit. By Detroiters. Welcome to the Woodward Sports Network. The Foley Warehouse in Hamtramck is home to the original football bowling game. Two ways to play, unlimited open play, and a $120 lane reservation for up to 10 people. Plus, they've got the $2 mystery beer machine and the fully loaded bar as well. Check them out today. Get your phone on at foleywarehouse.com. All right. We're back. 920. The Heineken has arrived. I'm feeling great. Can't drink it till later, but damn it. It makes me happy at least. <laughs> oh, God. 920 on a beautiful Monday morning. I hope you all had a great weekend. Uh, no Jeff today. Be back tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, you know, sore throat. Voice a little gone. Uh, put a little too many things in his mouth. Unfortunate, but, you know, we all move past things, right? We, uh, good friends pick each other up. Uh, not, at their, not at their high times, but when they're low. So here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. I want to take a few callers, okay? And I want to take a few callers on the question that, what do you think of Teddy Bridgewater as your backup next year? And are you on board with the idea of Bridgewater or drafting a quarterback, okay? So, JB, you can send the callers through. For all of you that are listening and on hold right now, that's the question. Feel free to answer. If you want to pivot in a different direction, I don't mind, but I really want to talk about the backup uh, position for the next 9, 10 minutes. So, JB, send them through. All right, I will send you Rico. Here's Rico for you. Who is it? Rico. All right, Rico, you're on the morning show. What do you got for us, man? Uh, Teddy Bridgewater as the backup. Uh, I guess it just depends on how much he costs, really. Um, I mean, he's got the experience. If Jared Goff goes down, you know, I'd feel comfortable about him going in there. But I guess it just depends on how much he's going to cost, really. Uh, I would say, what, 8, 10, 12 million? I mean, that's kind of the backup quarterback market right now. I I don't hate it if it's on a one-year deal, no? Right, right. Um, do you think, you know, maybe, eight, I mean, is it, with Jared Goff being healthy, I mean, we haven't really had a hurt Jared Goff. Do you think a price, that price point is really necessary? Yeah, that's what I think. To be honest with you, Rico, I, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, the kid's always been healthy in his career. He's only missed a handful of games in, what, seven, eight seasons as a quarterback now. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reality is, Rico, this team is fucked if Jared Goff gets injured. So, you know, it doesn't matter who they sign. Right. Right. Now, and then I want to go back to the uh, the chart thing because I yep. first called about that. Um, I, you know, I had a friend who was real big on chart. I really was the minority that really didn't want chart back because I felt – Ten million dollars for three touchdowns and five hundred yards was a little too much. I feel like we get a rookie that could do the same exact thing. Um, I really like At Perry out of Wake Forest. Yep. At Perry, he's six four, ran a four four. Um, I think he had eleven touchdowns, almost a thousand yards. Maybe third round, fifth round. It probably won't be their fifth round, but third round. Um, get us a tall guy on the outside. Let Jameson Williams cook. Let Amon Ra, who was ranked second in PFF, cook. Um, I think we'd be all right. I do, too. Uh, and even, you know what, honestly, Rico, if they don't draft a receiver, I still think they'll be all right because I watched Jared Goff roll around the top seven offense to start the season with no Chark and no Jamison Williams throwing at Reynolds, Khalif Raymond, and Monroe St. Brown. Exactly, exactly. Appreciate the call, man. Bless Ramadan. Have a good one, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. It means a lot. You know, honestly, that's one of my favorite calls we've done. Sensible. Straight to the point. No bullshit. Sign me up. More of that. More of that. JB, I think Mike or Mike is on the line somewhere on there. Yes? Uh, yes, we do have a Mike all right. on the line. Mike, Mike. All right, enough of your bitching. All right? Number one, I didn't take callers last segment. Number two, I miss you, buddy. How are you? Mike? You got me on the line? Yeah, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, good morning. What's up? Relaxing Monday. DJ Chark is down the road. Man, uh, w one, this isn't Mike, by the way. All right, two, uh, Chark, yeah, look, he's gone. He's off to Carolina. Mike, where the fuck are you, by the way? What are we doing here? But Mike, go ahead. I'm continue. in Ashland, Kentucky. <laughs> oh, God. What do you think, buddy? What do you think of the uh, signing? Or, excuse me, uh, what do you think of Carolina signing Chark? Good for them. They can have that overpaid receiver. <laughs> what do you think, t Teddy Bridgewater in Detroit? Fine with that. Uh, or do you want them I, to draft a quarterback? 
I want to see him draft a quarterback. I like that guy out of Purdue, and I also like Hooker out of Tennessee. Okay, okay, I don't mind that. Yeah. I don't mind that. Second round pick and Hooker probably is where he's going to go. Um, I don't hate that, right. Mike. I don't hate that at all. Uh, what'd you think of Jeff's mock draft? I want to go back to Jeff for a little bit. A pipe dream. A pipe dream, right? Yeah, I figured. I figured, Mike. <laughs> but it would be nice, right. though. Would be nice. First round draft picks are only quarterbacks, trenches, or offensive weapons. Yep, you get it. That's exactly yeah. What the anything NFL's after at, that man. is linebackers, cornerbacks. They're all works in progress. It takes time to develop. I would agree a hundred percent. Appreciate the call, Mike. Well done, man. All right. Good morning. Good morning, man. Uh, Michael Mike is working now, so we're not even going to have him fucking. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, there's a mic on the line, but yeah. I don't think it's Michael. It's Mike. all good. It's all good. Shit happens. JB, Teddy Bridgewater, what do you think? Uh, how much is going to cost? It, eight, eight million dollars. Hell, ten. All right. I, okay, not ten, but yeah, I was going to say not ten, but yeah, eight. All right, that's fine. I, I'll, we can take I, that. A one-year deal. One, what do you one have to year lose? Deal, yeah, we don't really have anything. Incentive He's based, sit on the bench, right? You, you know? can give five of it straight up, and then he can make another two by starting uh, three games. And if he starts a playoff game, he can get another mil. I don't know, something like that. That's fine. Just to have a backup for insurance, you know, for Jared Goff, just in case something. Just happens, in case he misses a game or two, and you yeah. want to go one and one, one and two in those three games, right? Yeah, I'm fine with that. If you're drafting a quarterback, who do you take? If I'm drafting a quarterback? Yeah, I've, I've to, never asked you this. It has to be in those later rounds. If Hendon Oh, Hooker, you're not a first-round guy then. Oh, no. Thank no. God. It has to be in those later rounds. If Hendon Hooker is available, maybe in what, that third? Pick 55? Pick 81? I doubt 81. 55 or 81. If not, then yeah, you'll slide all the way down to sixth, seventh round, pick up a Clayton Toon or Stetson Bennett, as you picked up as well, too. Man. What you think? I think you're on. I think you're spot on. I don't hate the Teddy Bridgewater stuff though. I don't. Yeah, I, don't I could. I could get on board with it. But again, Jared Goff's never been really injury prone. And like I always say, if you lose your starting quarterback, you're fucked. So why does it matter, right? Like why does it matter? Like for example, this is probably the worst example I've come up with in a minute, but I'm gonna use it anyways. Your wife cheats on you. Does it matter with who? Does it matter? Whether she's a teacher and she does it with her student or she fucks the janitor. Does it matter? Does it matter, really? She still hey, cheated yo. on you? Right? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Horrible example, maybe. <laughs> Not my best one. <laughs> Bro, all day. Gotta be. <laughs> oh, God. Max Duggan, absolutely. Max Duggan will never work in the NFL, dude. Look, Denver. I like you. I don't know you, but I like you. All right? And that's a lot for me to say. Max Duggan won't work in the NFL, man. Just come on. Like we We like to think college quarterbacks work. Ninety five percent of them don't. And there's a reason for that. You have to not only have all the arm talent, you not only have to have all the accuracy, you not only now in the NFL have to be a little more mobile than you used to be, but add all on top of that, you have to be beyond beyond mentally tough. You have to check off all the character boxes. And whether you're a first-round or a seventh-round pick at the quarterback position, that's what you need. Who who are the recent success examples, right, of third-round picks and later, right? Who? Dak Prescott? Russell Wilson? That one comes to mind. That's a highly successful one. Cool. Tom Brady? The anomaly. Sixth-round pick. Who else? Drew Brees was a second-round pick. Jalen Hurts, second-round pick. The entire top 10 list is all first round picks. Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy won't make it in the NFL. Again, Brock Purdy, for example, right? Has the greatest offensive minded coach in the NFL. All pro at every position defensively and offensively. Yeah, I would like to think if my mom was in shape, she could probably start for the Niners and win a game or two. So, what does that mean? Thank you, JB. Somebody appreciates what I said. But maybe not the best example about cheating, but still, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Whether it's a quarterback that you sign or you draft, does it really matter? Jared Goff's a guy. Jared Goff's a guy. I don't care who you take. It doesn't matter. 
Jared Goff's the guy this year and next year. Nothing you can do about it, nothing I can do about it. Now, I can always say things can change. Jared Goff goes out and has an awful season. Lions win three games. Yeah, you're probably looking to draft the quarterback next year. I don't think that happens. I would be shocked if that happens. Even if they have injuries, I don't see that happening. But that's like the only only way, and that's like 0.01%. So here's what we're going to do. We'll take a break. When we get back, we'll go around the NFL. Uh, interesting signings happened over the weekend. Odell Beckham still available. Uh, the Cowboys, rumored to be after somebody. Who that is, we'll get to next. But before we go, I got to tell you about where I need to go, and honestly, I've been dodging it. I need to get a haircut. I mean, you know, I'm just saying. I look pretty rough right now. I acknowledge I probably come off looking like Bigfoot. All right? Maybe. Let's not go down that path. Anyways, moving on. Uh, Lady Jane's haircuts from an open 10 8, 7 days a week. Walk in any time. No appointment necessary. They're awesome stylists to take care of you like they always take care of me. So get to a local Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. The sports marketing agency would not be who we are without great community partners like Higuera Health and Carol Zuniga. It's an awesome opportunity to partner with your organization. Higuera Health is a, a comprehensive behavioral health organization. We serve children through older adults with mental health, substance use, and uh, developmental disabilities across Western Wayne counties and really excited to now be in Downriver communities as well. Give us a call at 734-458 Four six zero one. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit, but we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Lemieux and McCarty, who've had a good knockdown drag up. There they go, right on the wall. They are talking to one another. Woodward Sports. <laughs> All right, 9.32 on a Monday morning. No Jeff, but we're back here on the morning show live, WoodwardSports.com. Adam Badoon hosting the show by myself today with JB, Alex Broder in the building. Missing the show live, you can always tune in after, download the podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts. Search The Morning Woodward Show, leave it a five-star review, tell Jeff. That he likes things in his mouth. I don't care what you leave on the review. Just make sure you leave it and you make sure it's five stars. Having said that, let's go around the NFL a little bit, JB. Odell Beckham. A uh, rumor to want a lot of money to be playing uh, the wide receiver position this year. Not many teams are budging. Uh, if you're a team, and which team, uh, do you think needs to make a run for Odell? If any. And saying none is an acceptable answer. I mean, I probably got to go with yours, Dallas, just because, I mean, they love the big stars out there. But then again... They did get cooks. Yeah. So, I mean, is that really a big star, though? It's not a star, but it's an you, option. You know Jerry loves his stars out there, and I think adding Odell will probably make him a bigger star right there as well, too. It just depends on how much money he's going to ask for. I know $20 million is a lot that he came out first and said, but I think he retracted that and said it's going to cost more than two. Well, I think there's one team that should absolutely do it. Please don't say the Lions. Nope. They did it last year. They signed a disgruntled, underperforming injury. Uh, injury, I don't want to say prone, but you know he was hurt at times, wide receiver. The Chiefs with Juju Smith-Schuster. The Chiefs signed Juju Smith, and he had a year. And he went and got paid by the Patriots, which is funny and ironic because the Patriots used to be the team that would sign the guy on a one-year deal. They wouldn't pay him. Then he'd go get paid somewhere else. But anyways, we live in a different world now. I think the Chiefs should go after Odell Beckham Jr. 100%. Sign him on a one-year deal. Give him eight, $10 million incentive base. No problem. Let Patrick Mahomes have another option. And you move on. Only problem with that is I believe they only have about $10 million in cap space right now. And rumor is they want both. Odell and DeAndre Hopkins at the same time. Yeah, and I want four wives. That's not going to happen. <laughs> never say never. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. I don't even know, by the way, how you could pull that off. Imagine having four wives. Like, you would have knee uh, you would have knee replacement by like 35, I think, or 40. That's Jeff tomorrow morning. 
Well, I don't need to ask Jeff. Scotty Pippen apparently fucked four times a night for 23 years. You didn't see that story, bro? Bruh. What the hell was that? And she's like proud of it. <laughs> what the hell, man? We lived in such a fucked up world. We just know too much about everybody. I miss the days where I knew nothing. The less you know, the better. The less you know, the better. Anyways, moving on. Uh, I like Odell to the Chiefs. I, I'm not sure about the D-hop move. Because that's going to cost, apparently, reportedly, a second-round pick. I don't think Chiefs are going to do that. They're too shrewd. If you're the Chiefs, you go spend some money. Go get Odell. He fits, I think. Odell fits more than D-hop would, in my opinion. Because I think he fills Juju Smith's position day one. He's a slot guy. You love the underneath slant routes. That's all you want. D-Hop is a possession-wide receiver. You have to throw the 15, 10-yard out routes. You have to throw him the quick bubbles. You have to throw him the ball down the field. Uh, he's Look, they're both going to ask for the ball, but to me, Odell, Kansas City. It's not a bad option. I can already see Jackson Mahomes and Odell doing oh TikToks God. together right now. That, that was my biggest fear when they signed Juju. <laughs> <laughs> what a disaster. Imagine having a brother like that. You know, honestly, if I had that kind of money, I'd probably get my brother whacked. Honestly. Anybody opposed to that idea? No? Nobody on board? Everybody's laughing in the room. Would you whack your brother if you're Patrick Mahomes? Wouldn't you? You have all that money? You make a call? You call some mafia head in New Orleans or something? Hey, uh, I got a problem. You take care of it for me? Yeah, don't worry about it. All right, don't worry about it. TikTok. TikToker Jackson Mahomes dies in his home. I mean, it's funny because we're joking about it. Obviously, it'd be really horrible if it happened, but I'm just saying. Like, I can't imagine having a brother like that. I'd want to kill myself. I'd probably kill myself before I kill him. Horrible. Poor guy. It ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great drop. Is that Drewski? <laughs> That's a great job. Oh, man. Oh, man. You know what? By the way, one more free agent. Uh, the Lions should have looked at, in my opinion. Should have. Keyword. Uh, Bobby Wagner signs with the Seahawks. No problem. Wish him luck. Da -da 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 -da, all that stuff. No problem. Uh, to me, Bobby Wagner would have been a home run signing. But... Again, I'm not going to sit here and play this game with all of you where I'm going to act like I know what Brad Holmes is doing next. I don't, and I love that. I would prefer that. I love the idea that my GM is unpredictable. I love the idea that the GM of this football team leaves everybody out of the blue. Or, excuse me, out of the... Uh, what was the saying? He leaves everybody in the dark. There you go. That's the saying. I love that. Sign me up for more of that. Bobby Wagner would have been nice. Would have loved it. Off to Seattle. No problem. Not the end of the world. Lions have, what, $21.3 million in available cap space at the moment. Top five in the NFL. They're going to figure something out. What's next? I don't know. It could be nothing. They could probably not sign anybody for the rest of the free agency period. And I'd be okay with that. Or they could go make a trade. Or they could just wait till the draft. And I'm okay with all of it. I'm okay with all of it because I have a GM who's a better cook than that dude from the show. I forget his name. What's his name? Anybody? The cocaine guy? No, the meth guy? Breaking Bad? What's the cook's name? Oh, Heisenberg? Oh. Heisenberg. Holmes is a better cook than Heisenberg. Thank you. That's exactly who Brad Holmes is, and that's the level he's at. Whew. Quote, not everyone loves golf. Uh, excuse me, loves golf. That's because most fans can differentiate between a solid system slash scheme quarterback and a franchise quarterback, says Jimmy Short. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't. Because I think, and not I think, I know, since the year 2000, and that's my lifetime, my, time, uh, my timeline here, there have been, on average, five elite quarterbacks in the NFL in a given season. On average, five. Only five teams have them. So what do you do? Huh? What do you do if you don't have them? Would you rather have Jared Goff or Gardner Minshew? Would you rather have Jared Goff or Ryan Tannehill? 
Would you rather have Jared Goff or Jordan Love? Jared Goff or Brock Purdy? Jared Goff or... God, who's a good example here for me to use? Jared Goff or, to be honest, Geno Smith? Or Dak Prescott even? Or Kirk Cousins? Like, you would prefer Goff over every single one of them. It's not even close. You would prefer Goff over any rookie quarterback likely this year. For sure, Kenny Pickett, obviously. That's not saying much anyways. So what's the problem with Goff, huh? What is it? We understand as fans that he's a scheme quarterback. Shut the fuck up. It's not, it's not that... You know what a scheme quarterback is? Brock Purdy. Where you're limited and all you have to do is not fuck it up. When you throw for 4,400 yards and almost 30 touchdowns and less than... Well, eight intercep seven interceptions. I'm sorry. That, to me, is not a system quarterback. It's not. It's just not. If you replace Goff with Geno Smith, I don't have the Lions winning the division. If you replace Goff with Dak, I don't have the Lions winning the division. I think Goff carries a lot of weight on this team. I think he's very important. And I don't think you should undersell it. I'm not saying he's a franchise guy. I'm not saying he's elite. But he's one of the best quarterbacks after you move past the elites. Who are the elites? Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen. In my opinion, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert, J uh, Jalen Hurts. Those are the first six. And then after that, who? Stafford? Aaron Rodgers? Old? Aging? Not the best support system at the moment? Huh? In normal years, five years ago, yeah, they're, they're elite. And I still think Stafford's elite. Rodgers elite to an extent. But, man. Would I rather have Aaron Rodgers over Jared Goff in Detroit right now? No. Matthew Stafford right now over Jared Goff in Detroit? No. Struggling with injuries, back problems, elbow issues? Yeah, I'm going to pass. I get a guy who's 28 years old, threw for 4,300 yards, almost 30 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. Yeah, I like it. I don't love it, and I don't have to love it. But this idea that he's some scheme quarterback, it's a joke. First overall pick. For a reason. And he delivered in his early days with the Rams. And then his relationship with Sean McVay became totally toxic. And they moved on. And rightfully so. And they got their Super Bowl. And good for them. But the Lions also got something in return. They got two first-round picks and a guy that could serve as a short and long-term bridge. And every team, by the way, has a bridge quarterback. Unless you're one of the six teams that I just named. Every team. They're all bridges. They're all buying you time until you're lucky enough to maybe draft one of the top six guys in the league. That's the reality. And because of circumstances, Jared Goff right now is a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. I don't have a problem with it. I think people give Jared Goff too much shit. But we'll take a break. When we get back, we'll wrap up the show. Uh, we'll get to Mailbag at 9.50. But before we go, JB, our good friends over at Sintron. Yes, I got you. Centron is the official energy drink of the Detroit Red Wings. Right now, they have an exclusive offer with Woodward Sports fans for their limited edition Red Wings six-pack. Only $15 plus free shipping. Head over to drinkcentron.com backslash Woodward and try it today. All three delicious flavors. Centron has the classic, the classic sugar-free, and of course, Braylon's favorite, the cranberry. That's drinkcentron.com backslash Woodward. You don't have to go to the beach, man. You don't have to get your butt crack full of sand. You just need the little chili peppers, man, to get that glowing beach chili peppers tan. Join the Pepper Club for all the best deals in town. Plus, they will be all competitors by $5. ChiliPeppersTanning.com. Hottest bulbs, hottest deals, darkest tans. Your vitamin D headquarters. You just need a little chili peppers, man. Woodward Sports content. Head over to woodwardsports.com right now for up-to-date sports articles and great entertainment news. We have the best writers, bloggers, and coverage all at your fingertips. Head to woodwardsports.com right now to experience all Woodward Sports has to offer. At Alta, uptime matters. Alta equipment has everything you need to get the job done. Have a big project coming up? Alta Rent has you covered. Call them today at 844-GO-TO-ALTA. Once again, that's 844-GO, the number two, ALTA. 
I love it. I love it. 944. We have about five, six minutes. So here's what I'm going to do. I kind of gave my whole spiel on golf, okay? You guys know how I feel about the guy. Phone lines are open. 313-552-6322. You call in and tell me if you agree or disagree. At any given moment since the year 2000, there have been five to maybe six on some off years, seven in some occasions, elite quarterbacks in the NFL in one single season, which means 25 other teams don't have a quarterback they're in love with or don't have a quarterback that is the future of their team. Okay. So what does that mean for the Lions? You like it? You love him? You want to call in and tell me that he's the guy for the next 10 years? I'm not really going to entertain that, but okay. You want to call in and tell me he's shit? Uh, okay. But I think really somewhere between he's shit and he's elite I think there's common ground, though, right? He does have his flaws. He does have his mistakes. He's not perfect. Um, but he also isn't a problem here right now. And I like to address situations in a more calculated way. If I can have Goff be my quarterback for the next four years, and I can really bank on the idea that I'm going to really invest in the quarterback position when I'm in love, and ready with somebody cool take that route i have no problem with that at all no pressure cool i'll take two division titles in the next four years i haven't seen one in my fucking life i'll take two playoff wins in the next two three years i haven't seen one in my fucking life sign me up and then when you get by the way if if you ever get to a point where you're questioning if this team can win a super bowl or not I'll buy into that. Please, God, let me have those problems. Please, God, let me be the Niners and lose two of the last three NFC Championship games. Please, God, strike me down. Give me those problems. And then we can talk about all of it. But, JB, uh, shoot us over uh, some callers before we have to get to mailbag. All right, I will send you Fletch. Here's Fletch for you. Uh, is this Fletch at Woodward or hey, some Adam. other Fletch? <laughs> this is a different Fletch. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Fletch? Good morning to the Woodward Sports family. Flesh from Central Florida, man. I love you guys. Appreciate go it, man. Gators. Hey, man, uh, Jared Goff, I wasn't going to talk about him, but he has grown on me. I think he's grown on a lot of people. A lot of people didn't like him because he was replacing our boy, you know, Matty Stafford. And they weren't prepared to have that change. And now that they've seen the change, I don't see what the problem is. He is such an easygoing, nonchalant kind of guy, not demanding. He's playing in the system the way he needs to play. If you want to call him assistant quarterback, whatever. But he's doing his job for us, man. And until he majorly fucks that up, I don't see a reason to change. I, um, this Bridgewater thing, you know, Bridgewater, I don't think we need to have him as a backup. I think we're good with Nate just helping our boy out, get through the season. Of course, if there's an injury, we're screwed, like you said. But, I mean, I'm happy with golf. Honestly, Fletch, this has been one of my favorite callers uh, in a minute, uh, especially today, because – not even just today on the golf subject because I love that you said I don't love him uh, he has his flaws but he's good enough and you're going to be able to win playoff games you're going to be able to win divisions why well I've seen him do it and, and to me Fletch again give me the problems where Jared Goff is throwing two interceptions in an NFC title game and stopping the Lions from getting to the Super Bowl please God give me those problems Exactly. <laughs> and, hey, hey, and on another note, yep. I like both of your guys' drafts. I like your drafts. Jeff is a little unrealistic. But, yep. man, at this point, if we're at 18 and we're just looking at the best player available, why not try to trade up and get who we definitely want at three? If I we think can it's do possible. That. No, I agree with you. I think you can move up two, three, four spots with a second-round pick and maybe next year's third. I do. Yep. I think you're going to be. I want somebody able, on the field that can do something. I wouldn't. Right I now. wouldn't throw it past Brad Holmes. I wouldn't put it past him at all. To be honest with you, yep. that's a great but, point. But um, I would up. be willing. Yeah, but I would be willing at six. Man, I still like um, our Georgia guy. Man, I really like him. I know he has problems, but I think the Lions are a team that could bring him in and help him along the way. Get his act together. It's, it's, I just think the Lions are that team that can do that if they had to. I, I you don't, don't want to have to do it. I don't hate that opinion. Um, 
I agree with you, and I think he's so talented. I, I would agree. Mm -hmm. uh, my biggest problem is I think no. It, it's good to have a good support system around you, but at the end of the day, you, me, all of us as individuals have full control over whether or not sure. we reach our potential. So, uh, I'm to be a big boy about the whole thing. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's a great call, though. I appreciate you, Fletch. Well done, man. Yeah, hey. One more thing, 18, yep. if we got to do something at 18, I love Skaronsky if he's there. Oh, my goodness, right? Built for our future. Would you trade up for him? If I trade told you he was available at 11, 13? I don't think so. Okay. I'd rather have somebody that can get on the field right now, you know, but um, I would definitely like him at 18 if we get him. All right. I like it. Appreciate the call, Fletch. Have a good rest of your day, man. Thank you. Thanks, well guys. Done. Appreciate it. That was a good call, man. I enjoyed that. Uh, here's what we're going to do. Take a break. When we get back, mailbag, drop your questions in the chat. I'll answer all of them. Uh, have some fun with it. Questions regarding the draft, free agency, uh, college basketball, women's basketball, Lamar Jackson. I don't give a shit. Whatever you want to talk about. It's about you guys next. So we'll do that. But before we go, JB, our good friends over at Guardian Alarm. Not a problem, I got you. Guardian Alarm, customized solutions from real experts. Their professionals, technici technicians take the time to recommend security and automation solutions specific to your needs. With 24-7 professional monitoring, call at any time, day or night, and know that a Guardian team member will stay on the phone as long as needed. Safety and security deserves technology that's been proven to work by people who are proven to care. Call this number right here, 1-800-STAY-OUT, and let them know what we're sports sent you. Saturdays at 1 p.m. Make sure you're watching WoodwardSports.com for our new show. Jumping puck. He shoots. He scores. With four-time Stanley Cup champion Darren McCarty and Michael Gentry. Jumping puck is taking the Detroit hockey community and giving them a voice. Pros to Joes. You'll get the best Detroit hockey coverage around. Jumping puck. Saturdays 1 p.m. on WoodwardSports.com. Introducing the Planet Fitness Guide to getting that post-workout glow. Step one, what's your why? More epic energy, better sleep, blow off steam? Step two, join Planet Fitness for just $10 a month and get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. Step three, bask in that post-workout glow. Join Planet Fitness today for just $10 a month. Join today at any of the 50 plus Detroit area locations. It's a great day to get some sense around in your life. Ah, okay, okay, okay. There it is, there it is. Sense around, here we go. Gotta grab the cranberry. Oh wait, it's two for four. Gotta double up with the classic as well. Sense around world, baby. Sense around, available at select Kroger's and if you wanna know how, go to at centronworld.com. You get dope like me. You know what, why wait? Great taste, guaranteed. You have an opinion? Make sure it's seen and heard. Corner, jumper, ah! Tweet us, hop on the YouTube chat, slide in the DMS at Woodward Sports on all social media. All right, let me tell you about my good friends over at Custom Health Centers. You can sign up today. Give Dr. Jason and his excellent team a call, 844-789-8446. Start your health journey today. Uh, we've seen Ryan Armani drop over 20 pounds. My brother down 15 pounds since he started. It's a bit more extreme, though. He's really trying to lose a lot of weight. Ryan trying to do it the natural, consistent over time. It's, it's working. It's working for both of them. I'm happy for both. Uh, Check out Dr. Jason and his team at Custom Health Centers. We're back. 9.53, mailbag time. We'll get to your questions. Mailbag, how bad would this fan base flip out if Brad Holmes moves up to two or three to take Anthony Richardson? Um... You know... The best way I can put this is, have you ever... Have you guys ever been broken up with, like at a young age? It's like your first breakup. You're so disappointed. You're so heartbroken. It's the worst thing in the world. You feel like the world's going to end. I think that's exactly how it would be. And I, I wouldn't lie to you. I would be very upset. I would lose my shit. 
I would come on the show and say things I would probably be removed off air for saying. And they would never let me do a show again. I would be irate. I'd be very, very, very angry. Like more angry than you've ever... You think I'm angry? You think I'm an angry person? If that were to ever happen? If you think what Genghis Khan did to people was bad? Wait the wait till the fuck you see what I do. Can't even finish a sentence how upset I am and it's not even real. Jesus. All right. Other questions. Let's go to mailbag. What do you guys got in the chat? Uh, we'll go to, let's see, uh, Michael. Michael says, what do you guys think uh, about Joel Klatt's mock draft? Tyree Wilson at 6 for the Lions. Bijan at 18. Mozzie Smith at 48. Drew Sanders at 55. It's a solid-ass board. Except I don't want Bijan Robinson. Your GM literally just told you, I'm not drafting a running back. When he went and got David Montgomery. Had he not signed David Montgomery, I I would actually consider it. But even then, I don't think Bijan's there at 18. I think he goes 10 to the Eagles. I think any team from 11 to 15 will want to take him. Uh, I, I don't see him. I, I don't see it happening. It's just not realistic. Adam, are you going to watch the Frozen Four? Is that the hockey version of the Final Four? Didn't Michigan win in overtime over the weekend, by the way? I believe so. I think Me Michigan men's hockey got to the Frozen Four, so good for them. That's a big deal. Um, Michigan... To my knowledge, has always been an excellent hockey team. So, putting out NHL prospects every year. Uh, let's see what other questions we have. Uh, Trump gonna get a second term easy. What do you guys think, huh? Honestly, what do you guys think? I think he wins. <laughs> I do. He's running against a guy with dementia. Like, how hard can that be? He took down Hillary Clinton. You know? Like, that was a big deal at the time. That was, a, that was like a fucking 16 seed taking down a one seed. I mean, I, th I think Trump beats Bernie. Uh, not Bernie. What am I saying? Uh, dude with dementia. Joe Biden, current president. I think he beats him easily. I'm not saying it's who I'd vote for. I'm just telling you what I think. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What are you going to do? Mailbag, uh, where are you comfortable drafting a tight end? This class is extremely deep. I like Kincaid a lot. I do too, but I'm not taking him at 18. Uh, Alec, I don't know, man. I I'm not a fan of first-round tight ends, and I'm not going to move off of it. If you told me the Lions move pick 55 and a future second to move up to 35, 36, and Dalton Kincaid was on the board in the second round, okay, I could do that. I could sign up for that. I just, I don't know. I'm not taking him in the first round, and to me, he's a first-round tight end for somebody, not for the Lions. So. Uh, let's see what other mailbag questions we have in the chat. Uh, da, da, da. Adam, why do you love dictators? I don't know. I don't know. I, th I think... I don't know what I think anymore. <laughs> I don't love dictators. I just... I have a weird way of appreciating history if that's the way to say it right like i don't get offended talking about shit bad shit that happened i think you should learn from history so you don't repeat the same mistakes uh tough you know tough pro tough thing to understand i know ford or chevy i hate ford i'm not a ford guy but i'm also not a chevy guy i'm a neither guy i don't like either car i just don't I've driven a Ford Focus before. Okay. My wife has an Escape. Currently, my wife has an Escape. She likes it. I don't. I think the brakes are super shitty and sensitive, but, you know, whatever. Whatever. Uh, if Chicago is targeting an offensive lineman, double benefit to taking uh, the one they want. Yeah, but if they, if they want, Chicago can probably get Peter Skronsky at nine. I don't think they'd have to move. I think they can get him at nine if they're smart enough to get him. Uh, Adam, what do you drive? I drive a Jeep. I drive a Jeep. What? Jeep is a Jeep, right? There's no like other company for it, right? It's a Jeep. Yeah, just Jeep. Like just Chevy, Chevrolet is what? The Camaro and all that shit? Like Chevrolet, the brand. Isn't that like Camaro, uh, Corvette, 
all that shit. Uh, I don't know. You guys are asking the wrong guy here. Uh, Jeeps suck even more. Yeah, maybe they suck, but at least the fucking brakes work. Drove my wife's car yesterday. I have to fucking slam the brake. It's ridiculous. Most annoying shit in the world. All right, moving on. Uh, have you seen those Jeep truck hybrids? Yeah, I don't like those. What are they called? The, the open bed Jeeps? Gladiators. Stupid car. St whoever designed that, I hope they lost their job, by the way. Stupid car. Stupid car. But that's it for us today. Appreciate you guys joining the show. Hope Jeff feels better. Hope he's back tomorrow. Should be a fun show with him back. Uh, we'll get to talk about his mock and what he thought of it because, well, he wasn't here to defend himself. But you all have a great rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us, us meaning Woodward Sports, on YouTube, or excuse me, social media in general. Till tomorrow, have a great rest of your Monday. I hope you have a great uh, start to your week. Try not to fast like me. You can be fucking angry and cranky. It's not a good thing. And if you can drink coffee, drink four of them. And one of them for me. Please and thank you. Have a great rest of your day, guys. We're out of here. Till tomorrow. See you later.